Back here for part two of the title match from Harley's Camarillo Bowl. Ryan Peden is trailing by 10 pins to Scott Moyle, and not anymore, he's not. He evens up the match with that double. Yes. Meanwhile, Leia Zwag has just about lost the 68 pin handicap difference that she has advantage over Mark Kugelmeyer, and she's uh, dealing with some hook and lanes right now, and she's gonna have to make an adjustment as she's got 57 through six, and is working on a three-bagger and clean otherwise. In the scratch division, it's an all Northern California title match as Scott Boyle and Beaton are going at it. They're dead even right now. Boyle can re-extend to nine pins with the strike here. Wow, and that ball was right of target the whole time and stayed right and was lucky to not leave a big split right there. Breaks it up and leaves only the 6-10. If he spares it up, we will be exactly even through six frames. Very high scores today. Boyle with a chance at the eight game record. He qualified a plus 448 when it was all said and done. Beg your pardon, Wesley qualified at 446. Boyle was even higher at 481 over for eight games today. Mark Kugelmeyer looking for his fourth JBT title since January. He's earned enough points today to get himself into the top five in the season long points race, which earns him an exemption at the SoCal Invitational, which is coming up in June. We're here on a windy last day in April in beautiful Ventura County. Oh, good shot. Leaves the seven pin. He'll take that. Just filling frames. Looks like it's going to be enough right now. Oh, there's a crazy pink monster coming on screen. I think you've had one too many engagement pops, Miss. Hey, she only had one. Well, that was one too many. I can get more. Mark, excellent spare shooter as well. He's going to go cross lane at the seven pins with a hard plastic ball and a little too hard and a little too straight right there. Goes right in the brown board. That open frame still in great shape here. He's leading by 90 and he's only got to make up 67. So we got to get Miss Wag on track here. That ball's hooking too much where she was. She's got to move left and swing that ball out a little bit. That's not her natural game. She does move left. And that ball's still gonna hook up on her, goodness gracious. At least we got something makeable here at the 3610. We hope she spares it up. <laughs> These title matches can go very quickly on you. Peden to take the lead for him. Oh! His crowd said tip ball, and it tipped plenty and left a solid nine instead. That's a spare, Leah. That her, girl. Big round of applause for the crowd trying to keep her chin up there. Even, even her big brother gave her a high five. That can't happen very often. There we go. <laughs> big brother almost won Powerball today if you didn't watch part one of the video. 50 bucks for three shots of bowling. He'll take it every time. Dead even Scott Boyle, seventh frame. Spare working. Oh boy. Could have got 50 pins down with that ball. Crushes the rack. As you can see, these two guys just hate each other. They're all hanging out with the rest of the NorCal bunch there. <laughs> Pure hatred through all of these people, really. Nothing they can't really. Daddy, you're there, right? 19, 20. So hard to tell ages. I hit that time for Mark, but trips up that six pin. Continues to lead comfortably in this game. The only problem that Mark is going to have with all of these titles and everything is every time you win, and typically that average goes up, that average is going to go way up today as he qualified second at plus 243. And he was already at 191 going into this uh, tournament, so it's going to go up even higher. His handicap is already only eight. It's going to go down yet again. So that's the only really potential roadblock is that if he hit a little bit tougher condition, he's going to have very few pins. <laughs> 
But if, if that's the only negative to a ferocious run by him, he will take it every time. Meanwhile, Peden keeps the match even with an eighth frame strike. Hang on, ball. All right, she converts to 1-3 for her second consecutive spare. The lanes are so dry on the outside edge on the right now, it doesn't matter if you throw urethane, resin, plastic, or a ping pong ball down there, it's going to hook from that spot. So she's just got to move left and catch a little more oil. That's just might not be in her playbook right now, so maybe she can just get lucky with some Brooklyns or something. We'll see what happens. Boyle can take the lead with the strike in the eighth. Back and forth the scratch bowlers go, but that ball stayed left the whole time. Wow, real nice break late tripping out that three pin. Much better than just a 310. He was high last time on that lane, and it looks like he moved off that high hit. I think that was simply a bad shot by Scott, and he might, sometimes that happens, you move off a bad shot, and then when you move, and then you go really light the next time, like you did in that frame, you end up confusing yourself. And you always gotta ask yourself as a bowler, when you miss, was that me or was that the lanes? I think it was him. He might have thought it was the lanes. And he's got to finish on yeah. that lane in the 10th frame. So it'll be really interesting if he needs to strike in the 10th frame what he does on lane 18. Hugelmeyer just has to avoid disaster and he's going to win today's title. Boy, I tell you, he just sets his mind to it and he gets it done. There you go. When he needs to strike, he just does it. You'll see him just kind of rolling along, nine spare, nine spare strike, a little open here and there. And then all of a sudden, when he absolutely has to be there, he throws the shots, and that's uh, how you win titles. Well, if it is the second place finish, it appears destined to be. It'll, it'll be sad for her for a little while, and then she should be awful darn happy with what she's accomplished today. 116 average going in, like we said, never made a top five before. Her low game prior to this was 140, so she's just killed them all day long. Title matches can be different stories. Beaton trails by one, but advantage him because he's working on the strike here. Ninth frame, that's right. Oh, and that just barely holds on and carries that nine pin. And with that, he grabs the lead, so again back and forth and scratch. Oh, boy, that shows you how much friction's on the outside. Wow. As that ball goes to the quarter board and still hooks past Brooklyn. Over 100. Hey, she's going to bowl a game somewhere near her average right now. Just a Mark Hugelmeyer, not your average bowler right now. Scott can strike out for 226. The best Peden can do is 235. So an important shot here from Boyle in the ninth frame. <laughs> Crush. Well, the good news for Boyle is he was perfect on the left-hand lane. The bad news for Boyle is he's got to finish on the right-hand lane, and he elected to do so as well. They get uh, four practice balls before each match, and uh, it was Scott's choice as the top seed where he wanted to finish. That's what he chose. I'm sure it would be the other way around if he had his choice right now, but we'll see how it finishes up. Mark is uh, getting a victory lap on international web television. Wow. Please, the old 6, 8, 10. It doesn't matter. It would just be an even bigger exclamation point on the day if he can spare this up. If he misses them all, he's got 198. The best way it can do is 131, which is a 67 pin difference. So if he misses them all, Leo would need all three to tie. I, just, I simply don't see that happening. That's a winner, officially. 202 scratch. 210 with pins. Mark Hugelmeyer wins his fourth title of 2011 in the handicap division. In the top five, exempt in the invitational. What a run for him. What a run today for Leia, too. Just hook, 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 and more hook, and couldn't quite move to it. Chin up, Vera, we're all proud of you. It was Scott's choice whether to go first or let Ryan go first. He's elected to have Ryan go first. Keaton needs two strikes to shut out Boyle. Anything less, Scott can win the tournament. Oh, instead, 
right through the heart and the four, six, seven. My goodness. In what had been to this point an extremely high scoring day, not a high scoring title match from either bowler. And Brian here is, is in a pickle. He's, he's got to hope to bounce it out at this point. Oh, well, doesn't bounce it out and finishes at 200 even, right? Yes, 200 even. Boyle will now only need a mark to win this tournament. Boy, he didn't have a chance to shut him out before he even gets on the lane. But as Leah finishes with a fine 120 game and a big round of applause from the crowd here, which we appreciate. The only, the only question mark here is that Boyle has been weaker on this lane. He did nothing but strikes on the left-hand lane. On the right-hand lane, he's got nine miss, strike, eight spare, nine spare. He went very high two times ago on this lane and very light last time on this lane. <laughs> Must mark to win. Annie Mark will do it. You betcha. For a man who wins team trials and wins plenty of other tournaments in youth and adults, it is no surprise at all that he zones in on lane 18 and saws the rack apart to ice up the victory. Well, almost set the all-time scoring record, win your first title, get yourself invitational eligible. A profitable trip down south for the extremely talented NorCal bowler. And interestingly enough, he's only going to finish with 215. So after the first seven games of unbeatableness, the lane started to change and he only went 2-0 and 2 team down the stretch, but it's enough to win. Black ladies? There might not be enough blocks down there. Listen, listen, there's definitely two second places. Grab any two other plaques that are down there too and just give them to the first place plate temporarily, got it?